Hey everyone, it's Ricky Molina from the Ricky Molina YouTube channel and also RickyMolinaProductions.com. Glad you could be with me today. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a review of uh, my experience with Godin guitars, particularly the nylon Godin electric nylon guitars. You know, a couple of weeks ago, actually a little over two months ago, I purchased an older Godin model, and it was the Godin ACS Cedar Natural. It's also the natural wood finish like this guitar. This guitar that I have on my lap here is the new Godin Grand Concert SA HG Natural. HG stands for High Gloss Natural. There's actually a High Gloss Natural European Spruce top here and a mahogany back, as you can see. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the specs in a second. But over two months ago, I purchased an older model of Godin, the Cedar Natural. And it's not a typical classical guitar. That guitar was actually uh, had a narrower neck. Uh, it had a width around the nut here of 1 and 7 eighths inches, as opposed to the Grand Concert Classical uh, Godin, which is a 2 inch neck width at the nut, which is typical of most classical guitars. And also another significant difference between that guitar, the Cedar Natural, and the Grand Concert guitar is the neck length. Uh, the length of the Cedar Natural uh, was actually 23 frets. Uh, I don't know the exact measurement offhand. You could probably check that out online if you want. But all I can say is that it was a uh, much longer neck. It felt like it. The longer neck has certain advantages for soloing up here, as you can imagine, in the higher registers. And if you want to check out the sound of that original guitar that I played, it's an older model Godin. Again, it's the ACS Cedar Natural. And I have a previous video that I made uh, called Andalusian Prophecy, where I play that guitar. It's a classical piece that I wrote. And, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of everything in it, so you can get a good idea as to what that guitar sounds like. And in the links, I also have a link to the Spotify page where you can hear the song in its uh, studio recorded version. But the reason I decided to return it and get this new Godin classical is primarily uh, because of the neck. It was a little bit uh, too long for me. I found that uh, due to the length, my body wasn't used to. My arm and my wrist had to be put in a certain position sometimes where it was rather uncomfortable. I noticed that after a few hours of playing it, that it would cause some pain around the wrist area and a little bit up around the arm joints. So it was an unnatural, uncomfortable feel. And I also felt that it didn't sit right on my lap. It's very important when you buy a guitar that it sits comfortably on your lap and is easy to play from a physical ergonomic perspective. There is no reason why you should be, you know, uh, hunched over your guitar or squeezed in any way or having to stretch or anything like that. That's why they make guitars in different sizes and styles because everybody is different and everybody feels differently when they play it physically. And I also found that probably because of the neck length that the strings were longer, which made them looser on the fretboard. And so because they were looser, they kind of twanged a little bit more, much to my dislike. I didn't like the twanginess, when, you, especially when you're plucking the strings. Um, this guitar doesn't twang like that one. Um, and I think it has something to do with the length of the strings themselves and the length of the neck. That was an important reason for me to return it. Now, 1 and 7 eighths inch guitars aren't necessarily the end of the world. They're actually quite useful. I mean, Stratocasters, for example, have very narrow necks. But in case of electric guitars, um, jazz guitars and strats and such, the narrower neck isn't that much of a problem because you've got metal strings against uh, a metal frets, which isn't that much of a problem. What I started to find with that 1 and 7 eighths inch neck on the Godin Nylon guitar was that I was slipping off the fretboard every now and then. Like, I would, I would do something like this. You hear that? Occasionally, I would slip off the fretboard. And it wasn't because, you know, I'm not an experienced guitarist or anything. It just happens. And that's because it's nylon that's slipping off of the steel edge, so to speak. 
Nylon strings are much more slippy. Nylon strings are much slipperier. Is that a word? More slippy than than metal strings on metal frets. And that was an issue for me as well. Another issue that I discovered with that other Godin, uh, which again is the same guitar that I played in the Andalusian Prophecy video, is that the bass strings kind of rang a little bit too much. I often found that I was trying to mute the bass strings when I was playing certain pieces, which shouldn't necessarily happen. So I went back to Sam Ash where I bought the older Godin and they were nice enough to accept it as a return, full credit, even though I had exceeded the 30-day trial period. Most guitar stores and franchises have a 30-day trial period where you can try out the guitar and see if it really fits your taste. So they were able to take the older Godin back, full credit, towards the purchase of this new Godin Grand Concert SA HG Natural. The exact model number is uh, 12817WC but it's much more expensive. I had to actually tack on a couple hundred bucks towards the purchase of this guitar, and I am not at all sorry. I can tell you after playing this guitar for about a week now, I really, really enjoy it. And at the end of this video, I'll append a live recording of uh, Over the Rainbow. I'm actually going through an amplifier right now, which is being picked up by the mic. And for the Over the Rainbow recording, which you'll find at the end of this video, I used a Roswell Mini K47 mic. Really, really great mic. All around mic. It's awesome. If you have a home recording studio and you need a great utility mic that covers pretty much all the frequencies you can imagine very, very well. It's, it's a nice mic. I've got it in front of a Fender Mustang a solid state amp. I know it's not a tube amp, but it actually sounds better than the tube amps that I have. So I'm going direct into the Fender Mustang amp. I've got a little bit of reverb on there and a tiny bit of compression. Uh, and I fixed up the sound a little bit with a little EQ in the DAW. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much the, the sound of this guitar. And for you classical guitar purists out there, I happen to be classically trained myself. And I grew up playing classical guitars, and some of them were pretty good. I had one in particular that I liked very much, but I found that it became, over the years, harder and harder to play. And that had nothing to do necessarily with the truss rod or anything like that. That guitar was solid. It didn't have a truss rod, but the action just on that guitar, and perhaps I could have had it adjusted over the years, but I noticed that the sound quality itself, even though it was an excellent guitar, this particular Juan Orozco guitar with Brazilian rosewood. Today, Brazilian rosewood is a no-no, as you can imagine. Back then when I bought it, um, it was not a rainforest shortage issue, but that guitar became that much more valuable. Anyways, I just found that the sound of the guitar, even though it was great, and I found that I could match it with certain electric nylon guitars if I mic'd the electric nylon guitars properly and if I just EQ'd it and compressed it just right I found that I could get sometimes even better sounds than I could with that really good Brazilian Rosewood guitar. And when it comes to electric nylon guitars there are the 100% piezo pickup versions and there are the more natural acoustic versions with the piezo pickup systems or built-in microphones as well. Now this particular grand concert guitar from Godin has RMC acoustic gold piezo pickups under the strings, okay? So these piezo pickups, these gold pickups, I don't know if you could see them. They're six individual piezo pickups, one for each string. So the information that's being uh, gathered from one particular string is not affecting that of the adjacent string. So there is no crosstalk between the strings. It's a pure signal coming from each individual string. And it's picking up the vibrations, which is then being transduced into an audio signal. Actually, it goes through a preamp system. It's called the PolyDrive preamp system. Then it's sent direct out through one of two jacks. You've got a quarter inch direct out here and that of course you can plug into an amp or into an interface and then you have the 13 pin DIN MIDI out jack which you can also then hook up to a guitar synthesizer 
or some sort of a module or MIDI converter uh, type of uh, device that'll convert MIDI signal into your DAW directly. But these days, you know, you don't need the 13 pin out to record MIDI. You can actually use the quarter pin uh, jack to plug into an interface and convert the audio from there into MIDI. And there are several ways to do that. And at some point down the road, I'm going to do a video where I show you how you can record uh, essentially audio out and, and translate it into a MIDI signal. There are a couple ways to do it, and some ways are better than others um, because of the tracking issue. The cleanliness of the tracking has always been an issue for guitarists who want to record audio into MIDI. But that's for another video. So you've got these RMC gold piezo pickups picking up the vibrations. There is no sound hole notice on this guitar. And I have another guitar that I'd like to show you briefly as a comparison. This is the Cordoba Negra studio version. There's a pro version of this as well. And the pro version goes for like $2,400 or something like that. Uh, this is a little cheaper version. Um, it's also very good. I've enjoyed playing this guitar over the years and recording with it. It's got a beautiful spruce top. It's got mahogany wood back, and it's got a rosewood neck. Very comfortable to play. The action is actually quite low for a classical guitar, but it's still a little high around the 12th fret. I actually measured the distance of the strings at the 12th fret between the Godin's and even this guitar, which has very low action. And there's something like a 2 16 or 1 8 of an inch difference, which makes the Godin's much more easy to play. The beautiful thing about this guitar is that it also has the piezo pickup system underneath the bridge, but unlike the RMC piezo pickups on the Godin's, where each string has its own pickup individually, this piezo pickup system rests under the saddle, under this bone saddle. The pickup runs along the string, so it's one whole pickup for all six strings at once. Again, it's picking up the vibrations, and it's being sent into a preamp here called the Presys preamp from Fishman. It's a very good system, and, and it still sounds somewhat piezo. But what you can do with this Cordoba is go direct out with the piezo pickup. Okay, there's, a, there's your direct out quarter inch jack for the piezo pickup system. And then you can use a mic to pick up the natural acoustics because this guitar is a hollow body guitar. It has width to it. It's a, it's a real box and it generates a nice sound on its own. So what you can do is you can blend the audio signal from the microphone together with the piezo direct out and mix it together. And what you want to do is add a little reverb and possibly a little bit of delay onto the piezo pickup side especially and then blend that in with the microphone signal on, on two separate tracks in the DAW and you get yourself a really nice uh, sounding guitar as well. But the only drawback with this guitar, in my opinion, is the fact that the action is a little high. I find that when I play classical and jazz pieces on this guitar, my fingers get tired much more quickly than on my jazz guitars and on the Godins, especially. So that could be an issue. Maybe what I'll look into is talking to a luthier who could then maybe shave off, you know, maybe an eighth inch on this saddle here which rests above the pickup system, as I mentioned. But let's get back to the Godins. So here we are with the Godin Grand Concert SA once again. Now for you classical purists out there, this guitar is not to be overlooked, even though it doesn't have the traditional sound hole, but it is extremely playable and fun to play. I can play this guitar for hours and not get tired, and it's just, it's just, 
as comfortable, if not more comfortable, than my electric guitars and jazz guitars. You know, the nylon strings themselves make it that much more easy to play and more comfortable. It's not at all stressful on my fingers, and the neck length is perfect, especially if you're used to classical guitars. So it's a real pleasure to play this instrument. And the thing that I really love about this guitar is that it sits very comfortably in your lap. You don't want to have to do balancing tricks on your thighs. Or where do I place it? Up here? Back here? Oh. But every guitar is different. So it really helps if you, you know, when you're going to a guitar store uh, to check out the ones that feel comfortable, not only um, for your arms, but also for the rest of your body and your lap and all of this. It, I can't emphasize that enough in terms of uh, translating that into the, your happiness and satisfaction with the, with the instrument over the years to come. And again, for you purists out there, I find that I come pretty darn close with this particular instrument to the authentic sound of a real classical guitar. Now, it's never going to be the same exact thing as something with a sound hole, with a natural acoustic recording with a microphone, but I come pretty darn close. So I find that by placing the microphone a certain distance away from the amplifier, you can actually simulate the sound that you would get from a sound hole. But it's not exact, but it's similar and a little bit of experimentation can go a long way in that regard. Now I'd like to share with you another way to uh, generate sound from your electric guitars and your electric nylon guitars particularly. And um, it's actually the way I practice guitar around here because I don't want to wake up the neighborhood, um, you know, family and, and neighbors down the road, etc. So I tend to not really play through amps unless I'm recording something in the house at least, and I have a home recording studio. So what I do is I tend to practice a lot using something like this. This is a Boss ME80, which is a guitar effects unit essentially, and it sort of mimics the stomp box style where you have, you know, your stomp box pedal board type of system. It's not exactly the same obviously because, you know, the patches follow a certain sequence. You can't really change um, the plugins in the chain, so to speak. But I like the fact that it has built-in preamp system, uh, which mimics different amplifier systems, everything from Fender Tweeds to like, you know, Marshall Stacks and things like that. It's got built-in EQ and compression. It's got your overdrive pedals and all that sounds and your modulation, your, your flangers, phasers and choruses and things like that. It's got semi delays and it's got a nice delay system here tape analog uh, reverse echo uh, different uh, settings that you can adjust the the amounts thereof it gets pretty fine-tuned here and you can create your own sounds and uh, simulate uh, different sounds as well as download uh, presets from the boss website with the uh, USB port here it's got an aux in and a headphone jack it also has a pedal effects system, an expression pedal effects, so you can have fun with volume dynamics as well as adjusting the tweaking of uh, parameters inside your delay settings, your distortion settings, etc. Built-in wah-wahs in here as well. Um, so it's an all-around very good utility type of guitar effects processor. But what I really love is the sound that I get when I plug my open-end headphones into the headphone jack and I practice through it. It's very hard for me to beat the quality of the sound that I get for my guitars when I'm playing through my headphones here. It's really a great device to practice with. I highly recommend it. And I'll just say one more thing about open back headphones. You know, I've got closed back headphones as well for the recording studio. Whenever you need to isolate the sound, you don't want the spillage coming out of the open-ended um, headphones into the mic when you're recording vocals, for example, or a guitar part, for example. But otherwise, I always use open back headphones. And the reason I find is that when I listen to closed back headphones for extended periods of time, let alone earbuds, I won't even go near them, I find that the energy of the music, particularly the bass, gets captured in, the, in, this, in these cans and it's focused on the ear canal. 
And I think that you can do some serious damage to your ears if you listen to closed back headphones extensively. I really like the fact that the open back headphones give you that air, that sense of space where the bass can spill out a little bit and not be parabolically focused. If you remember math class, how the parabola focuses the energy right down the middle into your ear canal. I think that can be seriously detrimental to your hearing. I just want to share with you my experience and help preserve your hearing over long periods of time. And we won't even go near earbuds. But that doesn't make any sense to me either. Anyways, I said earlier that I would end this video with a little sample playing a recording of this new Godin guitar that I purchased and highly recommend. And it's just a few bars of Over the Rainbow. So I hope you enjoy it and we'll close with that sample recording. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the Ricky Molina YouTube channel. This will give me incentive to do more videos like this where I do product reviews and share some original ideas with you, some of my original compositions. And once again, if you'd like to see how the older Godin, the Cedar Natural sounds, please check out my previous video called Andalusian Prophecy, where you can hear the live recording of it, as well as get access to a Spotify link where you can hear a studio version where I recorded the older Godin model that I played for that particular recording. Thank mm -hmm. you.